What is up my friends? Welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna talk about IEOs. We're gonna talk about cryptocurrency, what the heck an IEO is, and the new latest craze that people are cashing in on to make huge, stupid, ridiculous amounts of profit, and how you can too, if you want to. All right, let's dive in. First off, uh, I didn't really sleep last night, insanely tired today. <laughs> and uh, if I'm like a bit out of it, that's exactly why, okay? Let's start with what you're seeing on the screen right now. What you're seeing on the screen right now is really the culmination of just another instance of market cycle madness. Okay, so first off, let's start at the very beginning. Most people right now sitting on the sidelines still think that crypto is dead, they shouldn't invest, maybe they got burned and bought the top of the last uh, micro bubble, maybe they're sitting there thinking, who knows what, who cares? But the point is that because of a bias, because of a feeling, because of an emotion, they, that is stopping them from profiting, that is stopping them from making money. So to zoom out for a second, some of the biggest arguments about cryptocurrency is nothing's behind it, it's all a scam. So is the stock market, get over it. I don't understand why there isn't more people in, in a hybrid of like understanding the reality and then not being upset about the reality. The stock market was created as a legal way of gambling and those with the most friends and most insider information profit the most. How, explain it to me differently if that's not how it works. And that's not me dogging on it. Like the stock market's fine. Uh, cryptocurrency is fine. Uh, I don't really care uh, at the end of the day, right? You gotta kinda look at this black and white for what it is, right? Cryptocurrencies, I think, are just another thing, another way that you can make money. And if you're willing to look past all of your losses, maybe all of your beliefs, then you can make some money. If not, then, you know, I don't really know why you're watching a video like this, but there's other videos on the channel. You can check, you know, you can check those out. But um, another thing I'm commonly hearing is most of the cryptocurrencies are gonna go away. Yes, you're right. Profit is profit though, isn't it? And that doesn't mean like, you know, just uh, set everything aside and who cares about it. Like I, I do have some stuff, some projects that I obviously do care about, some projects that I'm holding on for a longer term, but also too, like I, I need to eat. So I do day trade and I do uh, swing trade and you know, sit on positions for any length of time between a couple hours and a couple months, right? And so all of this is leading to more financial freedom for me. So it's part of my plan, right? And so I guess at the end of the day, that's really more so what we're talking about here. And it's just kind of silly to let yourself get caught up in anything other than that. Make the plan work the plan, right? So what is an IEO? An IEO is essentially a recycled ICO, but managed by the exchange. So an IEO is an initial exchange offer. All this means is that now crypto startups are going to exchanges and having them host the pre-sale, host you know the early bird sale, whatever you want to call it, round one, round two. They're they're getting a little cut and then they're getting to launch on this quote unquote reputable platform. Naturally, you can see the benefit for both sides, but let me briefly explain. The exchange gets to say, yeah, we are selling out in you know, super fast amounts of time, you know, we're doing something positive for the community and we're helping these products, these products, services, startups come to the market, okay? And then obviously it makes sense for, you know, the business and startup to team up with the exchange because they're like a mentor, right? This is no different than what we used to do when we did product launching before, right? I uh, used to have a digital publishing company and once we figured out how to do it, what do you know? A bunch of people who were getting into the space brand new but wanted to make money launching programs and products and services, but they didn't know how. So how are they gonna do it? Well, we would uh, coach them and we would host the launch. We would literally launch under our name and quote unquote partner with them. So it was like the, the market cycle was the same. So as soon as, you know, it was starting to kind of dry up for maybe as, because you can only create so many programs per year. We mostly focus on software, but some people focus on information products too. I mean, unless you're full of shit and lying, like there's only so many digital information products you can create per year because it should be based on expertise you have. So as you're do, doing more tests, as you're learning new things, like you can only launch so many per year based on your own knowledge. So it allow you to essentially scale. And we actually were able to scale and then start to make multi millions of dollars through these launches. So it helped us make more revenue, which it does that for the exchanges in this example as well. Um, and in this scenario, the exchanges make way more money. They get 
tons of new, brand new users and everyone's talking and hyping up their exchanges the best because exchanges are now on the chopping block in terms of competition with each other. They're not really in trouble with the SEC. The SEC did release something recently. I haven't uh, done a deep dive in it yet, uh, but for the most part, from what I've read, uh, exchanges don't really have to worry in the United States. It's the same stuff, you know, so we would launch, co-launch products with people, put our name on it, and then, you know, obviously it had to be a good product, and then put our name on it, help them launch, launch it out to our mailing list. You know, we had hundreds of thousands of people on our, our mailing list at the time, and all of our affiliates and blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. It's the same thing here, guys. Market cycles are really one of the most important things you could focus on and spend your time and attention on because that's what's gonna prove to be the most true over time. Human beings do tend to repeat and duplicate over and over and over again. It just looks a little different each time. The insanity, though, is very similar. Fear, greed, etc. cetera, those, those are really what drive and dictate a market. Let's take a look here at some of these. This is not all of them, but it's a lot. And I'm gonna focus on just Bittrex and Binance because that's what, uh, uh, and Bit. Max because that's what I know the the best. I've never used uh, Hubi. I don't even know how to pronounce that. I don't really care actually. This is an exchange out of Asia. I'm not exactly sure where. I've never really looked into the exchange. It is from a volume standpoint one of the big players. But anyway, Binance is the big one. They really started this whole thing, I believe. The very first Binance Launchpad IEO, which just think of this as an initial coin offering, but done through an exchange, was BitTorrent, B-T-T. This number, I did double check, is correct. Some of these numbers I think are a little bit off, like off on the math, where was it? I believe one or two of these <coughs> were off on the math, like this math doesn't really look right to me, 833% at all. Um, so maybe they messed up a zero. But anyways, yeah, it did a thousand percent ROI in the first couple days. So essentially, from the minute that you bought on the launch pad, there was a tie up period of maybe like a week or two, and then they actually listed the coin on the exchange and it was open for trading. So you didn't have to sit on the coin very long and then boom, you're able to dump. And that's exactly what they did. Now, again, for those of you that are more used to the stock market who think this never happens in the stock market, it does. Look at the Lyft IPO. People like Jim Cramer were calling for $87 on Lyft and it listed at just over $80, dumped all the way down to 76. What do you think that was? And so the only difference is, is that even with all the regulation and all the agencies that are supposed to protect you, the little guy in the stock market, they don't. And they still allow front running and they still allow people to uh, dump on the general public. And so that doesn't stop. And so at least with cryptocurrencies, it's more honest. And you can just see that that's exactly how insane this stuff actually is. And I mean, there's example after example of this shit just totally tanking after it gets listed on the exchange within 48 hours. It's all all the way at the bottom again. If you miss these and you think that the project has some legs, then you could just buy the bottom anyway. Um, but most people, what they're doing is they're just generating quick, quick profit. And this is like a level and a layer of like the whole ecosystem in crypto. But this whole insanity with IEOs has really taken off. And I can tell you right now that I firmly believe that through 2019, this will be a way for you to make profit. Binance isn't going anywhere. Um, they continually just keep building. They've got their DEX launching soon, which is a decentralized exchange. They've got all kinds of projects going on. They're building out utility all the time. Even if it's not real utility, they can still make a nice list and a nice infographic saying they've got all this utility. And that's the more important thing. Uh, ZB Launchpad, I have no clue what that actually is, which this math doesn't add up, so that makes sense. Here's the, okay, so BitTorrent was the first, then Fetched and Seller. Again, some of these names I can't even pronounce, and I haven't even lo uh, looked into these projects at all most of them, Binance Launchpad. So this was IEO price in US dollars, which is eight cents. And then it went all the way up to 47 cents. I actually missed this uh, IEO. So I was there on the Launchpad trying to get in, did not, it sold out pretty quick. I'll show you that in just a second. And so that was a 550% return. And then uh, bitmax.io, which is another merging exchange. And they completely put themselves on the grid and in everybody's radar for two reasons. One, they did this first IEO and then they launched um, margin on BNB coin, which was one of the smartest things they could have done because now they are a big player. Good flow to the exchange. You don't really have issues with it. Decent UI, and it's got some other perks and stuff on the exchange. So these are all separate exchanges, by the way, um, which again is quite different than how you buy stocks because in the traditional markets, there's like five or six players and it never changes. There's never anyone new really. Here, there's a new exchange that could pop up every day. Okay, so 
it, just look at these percentages and these ROIs. And if you think that this math is maybe wrong, you could check it out for yourself. But judging off a few of these, like Veriblock, you know, one cent, uh, excuse me, 10 cents to 15 cents is 150%. Um, so these should be fairly accurate. But these are the big ones. So Veriblock was the first one on Bittrex. Uh, and then the third one on Binance, which just happened recently, was uh, Seller. And then the next one I'll talk about, and that one's coming up. Bigogo did a uh, armors and I believe that's the first one it did which was just a couple days ago April 3rd you know a lot of these were just within the last couple weeks and then BitTorrent I believe that started in February so now let's look okay yeah so here's some some ones that just happened Bitrix Veriblock was on the second armors was on the second KuCoin I don't have that on that list and and I don't really follow KuCoin that much because I don't really like the exchange I do that's totally because of a bias and I can admit that um, I got burned on KCS coin before back in 2007 17 and 2018 so I just don't even look at the coin anymore and again so even with that bias right there I can still make money and just ignore this one coin so it's still not stopping me here's the next launch for them April 16th uh, Binance's next launch will be on the 24th of this month April so this is this graphic is a little bit older but you guys get the point okay so let's get out of those now so Veriblock Bitrix announced this actually every exchange announces this because it's a way to like hype up their exchange and most of these are selling out in a matter of seconds most people are not getting in there's actually actually entire trade floors now or floors uh, uh, in Asia set up that they're trying to buy into these with hundreds of super fast computers. So the likelihood of getting in on one of these now is very low, which is forcing them, all the exchanges to change the layout and the terms, which I think overall will be better and it stops that abuse, but it will require you to hold their exchange coin for a significant amount of time up until and then afterwards. So anyways, sells out in 10 seconds. System uptime, 100%, number of purchasers, 855, average purchase size, 81 VBK. So there you go. Fetch AI happened on February 25th in just 22 seconds, sold 69 million fetch, collected $6 million, and there you go. Okay, and the, the fetch price now, from then until now, is completely tanked. I think it's sitting at 15 or 16 cents right now. Uh, Seller Network's token sales sold out 597 million tokens in 17 minutes, 35 seconds. And this was despite issues. So this is after CZ and Binance had already made changes to the network. The requirements did change quite a bit. I actually didn't pull that up, but you had to hold on to um, BNB, which is their exchange token, which is an, another play out of this. So a lot of these people, a lot of us aren't going to be able to get in on these IEOs, ICOs, etc. But what you can get in on is you can get in on the exchange coins, which that's kind of the second part of this video because those are going nuts as well. Seller Network partners with Binance Labs as a mentor for Binance Lab incubation program. So again, it's the same thing I just talked about where literally somebody with more clout, with more following, with more reach, mentors or works with another company, another person and opens them up to their network. That's all that they're doing with these little hustle. Okay. Now let's talk about the exchange coins and the effect that that's had. I'm going to only look at two. Bittrex right now doesn't have its own exchange coin. Uh, so we're going to look at Binance and KuCoin. Well, what do you know? Where are we at? Here's February. So February 25th, this was like this first little pump, right? So we see a gradual increase. It was sitting at nothing, eight, nine dollars. And everyone's like, hey, you know, what's what's going on? Because we everyone starts to see it pump. And then it's because of the hype. Even when people were watching this and seeing the hype, they still weren't buying in because they still weren't believing it. And Fetch was just the second IEO to be done. Done. Whereas now fast forward, April, this is all everyone's talking about in crypto. Besides the thousand dollar price move the other day and the fact that Bitcoin's sitting around five thousand dollars, this is what everyone's talking about is because again, it's greed, right? It's get rich quick. So just look at the trajectory here. And it's not, it doesn't have any signs of slowing down anytime soon. So it's literally at, sitting at all time highs, touched now $20. If you would have been paying attention and you would have just bought in here, your money would have doubled right now from the time of this whole madness starting and these IEOs starting to now. And it's like, it's so easy to talk about these things in hindsight, but if you've been in this space for any length of time, you should have already seen this coming. You should have been paying attention, which we all were. I didn't buy in down here. I bought in much higher up, but I'm sitting on a long position right now now for BNB, it's because I know that for at least the next four months, the next quarter, that position, I'm just going to keep adding to that long, keep adding to that long, and I will get I will get a good ROI out of that. Of course, there's technical analysis factors and fundamental analysis factors that I'm taking into it. I'm not just you know pulling this out of, out of my ass and doing it. But anyway, so that's one example. Here's a second example, KuCoin, which was just sitting rock bottom, 50 cents, 30 cents. Ugh. 
I lost a good amount of money on this exchange coin actually because I just I waited too late and uh, I was in too many positions as well. That's another hindrance I think that most people don't realize is it's really hard to track and keep an eye on so many open positions. So just don't do it. Okay, but anyways, you see what's going on here. <clears throat> okay, so April 2nd was their first one, right? So here we are, April 2nd, and then boom. Because you're required now with a lot of the exchanges to hold it for at least like 48 hours, hold the coin, and a certain amount of coin. So here you go. Uh, I don't know if that's an all-time high. Let's see what's one year. No, it's not. Yeah, that's what I thought. It did hit $5. And this was the peak of 2018 insanity <clears throat> coming off the back end of 2017 price still. And this is what everyone thought like, okay, well, you know, Binance was doing really good back then. So everyone thought, oh, okay, yeah, we'll just, we'll be safe if we go into KuCoin because KuCoin was an emerging competitor. It just didn't go that way. And he just lost and kept losing and kept losing all the way down to 50 cents. What is that? Like 95% loss? And that that's the thing that I want to note and stress again is that a lot of these positions, like there's two ways of trading. I buy it and I sit on it, or I buy and I sell. I buy and I sell, I buy and I sell. One, you have capital gains, one you don't. So if you hold a position for 365 days, you don't have capital gains tax. If you are a day trader, or if you want to not hope and pray that these positions won't go to complete shit in a year, then you've got to pay capital gains tax, okay? And so now let's shift gears for a quick second here. The next one, in case you want to jump in on this madness or just start to pay attention if you haven't already, maybe I'll shoot another video. Just let me know in the comment section if you want me to shoot another video breaking down all the exchange coins and kind of the madness behind that because there is a lot more. There's BitMax which is BTMX coin. And then there's uh, Bigogo, which is, what is their coin? I think it's BGO, something like that. And all those coins are pumping as well. KCS is pumping, Binance is pumping. So that's the second layer of this insanity, which is that all the exchange tokens themselves, which are the coins that are required to be used in all these IEOs and on the exchange itself are also starting to pump. But if you wanted to get in on this madness, the next one is going to be April 24th. This is for Matic and that will be done on Binance. I don't know of the upcoming ones, but you could check out that Crypto Differ. I believe it's CryptoDiffer.com. Uh, great resource site to get information on upcoming ICOs, IEOs. But again, let's wrap this up and just conclude here. What is this? IEOs is just a different word for ICOs. And we went from them all independently trying to do it on their own, which let's face it, 99% of ICOs launched had the most dog shit marketing I've ever seen in my life. Marketing sells. I don't care if you like it or not. Like that's why the one of the number one things you could learn in life is how to talk to people and how to sell because you'll always need that. A lot of these companies, they thought they didn't need it because hey, hey, yeah, it's crypto euphoria, fuck it, we don't need marketing. And it's just awful idea, awful idea. Embarrassing really. For anybody who knows anything about marketing, it's absolutely embarrassing. Now they've wisened up because the ICO market completely dried up and then out of nowhere, IEOs are born. So. Is it not a cycle repetition, but just a different name and a different face? Yes, it is. So how far will this one last? How long will this one go? Who knows? But there's profit to be made. And that is, I think, the biggest point here is that through all this, you can make a profit if you want to. Yes, it's volatile. Yes, most of this shit will not be around in two years. Guaranteed. Right now, though, there is money to be made. And if you want some, you get in, my friends. All right, that's all I got for you. Let me know in the comments section if you want me to break down all the exchange coins and literally like their kind of trajectory and their path that they've gone through and all the big players in the game. I can put in some more research and dig all that up. Absolutely. But let me know in the comments section if you care for me to shoot that video. And uh, if this is the first time you've been to the channel, found us through a playlist, suggested search, something good like that, and you like what we're doing, we talk about crypto, macro economy, all the good stuff, all the chaos that's going on around money money essentially and personal finance go ahead and subscribe click the bell notification if you got something to say i'd love to hear your thoughts comment below and if you want to support us guys just click the thumbs up it just takes two seconds in the time i just said it you could have just done it click the thumbs down if you didn't like it that's cool too and uh, that will help this video go uh, around and be seen by more people it really is that simple it is the algorithmic age in youtube and that's how these things work that's it for now be on the lookout more videos dropping soon bye I'm so happy. Thank you.